Okay, so in this drill, all I'm going to need is an additional golf club or alignment stick, my pitching wedge, and a chair. So this drill is specific to getting good hip rotation in the downswing. Uh, it's a really good drill for feel, and uh, it's something quite practical that you can do indoors and definitely do outdoors. So what I'll do is I'll take the chair, it's facing away from my body, and I'll just kind of snug it into my backside so it's connected onto my glutes. When I take my backswing on plane, I get to the top, I'll feel that my right pocket or the back side of my pants is connected to that chair. As I come down, this is the critical part. As I come down, I want to feel the left glute make connection. Now in doing that, you'll notice that my left leg, if I do this towards the camera, you'll notice that my left leg coming down gets nice and straight. So at the knee, there is zero bend. Uh, this is something that Tiger did exceptionally well um, in his prime. This is something that a lot of golfers do very well, and Freddie does an exceptional job at it still to this day. So that's why he's able to generate all that power because he's making this nice dynamic weight shift because his hip rotation is such a powerful move. So we go to the top, and I don't even need a club in my hands to do this really. I'll go to the top, when I come down, I wanna feel that connection. You'll see that my trail leg is turning in, I'm making that nice pivot. My body is in position for power. One thing that I did mention in the article, that right elbow staying bent in this position allows for Freddie to make that release. So that's where a lot of power is also coming through Freddie. So I hope you find this helpful and keep reading on. All right, folks, thanks for reading along so far. Here I'm gonna help narrate and visualize what I mean by your takeaway. So I'm gonna use an extra club here to help narrate what I'm discussing. What I'm gonna do is take that extra club, I'm gonna lay it down in a position, and this will be my ball to target line. Now what I'm gonna make sure that I do for my body line is stand parallel to that shaft that I just laid down. To understand the difference between an inside takeaway, an on-plane takeaway, or an outside takeaway, we're gonna understand the cause and effects of what it can do to your swing. So, for most golfers that struggle with the slice, they tend to have an immediate inside takeaway. Now, when, when instructors have told you to flatten out your swing, they don't mean in your takeaway, they mean in your downswing. So what happens if you go flat in your backswing? Your hands can only go flat for so long before they start to rise. And as they rise, they start to shift closer to the ball and further from your body. And that starts to cause that undesirable over the top swing, which can cause a slice. If the club face is closed, it can hit a hook. But that is kind of the standard um, motion. If you take the club on the inside, there's a good chance that you're gonna come over the top. And on plane swing, if I take the club center to the shaft that I laid down, I wanna trace that line back as far as I can. So when I get to about mid way to where the shaft is parallel to the horizon of the ground, it should also be parallel to my stance. And that means that I'm on plane and I have a really good chance of coming down with some nice power, get that in the out path like Freddie does, hit that nice powerful draw. Now, um, kind of in terms of where Freddie started, um, once he got with Butch Harmon, they cleaned up his takeaway just a little bit in 2003. Um, but he had a pronounced takeaway, which got his left arm in a very vertical position up top. But what that allowed for him, it's kind of like the opposite for flat. If flat goes here, my hands are gonna rise. Well, outside the line coming back allows me to make that transfer. Um, a player that we all know of, Jim Furyk, um, has an exaggerated motion of that. It's not a pretty thing to look at, but he does make it work. So I hope you found this helpful and uh, keep reading on. Thank you. All right, so now we've come to the third factor that Freddie does so well, which is the release. I'm going to use this football to help educate you and develop more of a feel versus a thought. So using the football, what I'll do is go laces up, 
I'm going to get one end of the ball pointing down to where the ball would be. The other end should be pointing upward towards my chest. And what I'll do here is just kind of take a short backswing. And as I come into impact, that right arm has a slight bend in the elbow. Okay. When I get to impact and I'm ready to hit through the ball, that's when I'm going to start to turn those laces to my backside. So for us right-handed golfers, it's going to be like we're going to spiral the football to the left. Okay, so let's look at the arms positions independently here. So coming down, this would be just right at impact. As I'm coming through, that right arm extends, gets that full extension to target, and it finishes in a palm down position. If I'm looking at my lead arm, I come to the top, I come down, I'm at impact as I'm coming through. It's going to have a slight bend in that elbow and I'm going to be palm up in my left hand. So together, this is the feel that I'm gonna go for. Now, when I'm doing this, maybe on the back side of the house, um, I have a brick house, so on the outside, I pick out an actual brick that's about hip high and I'll stand about seven to 10 feet from it. And as I go forward, I try to release it directly down my target line. So I wanna make sure that my body is right on that. That way I get that feel and delivery to get that nice extension and release. That way you can hit it just like Freddie. So thanks again for reading and I hope to see you guys soon.